Dan Griffith flying the Dragonfly, that's the shapely biplane. Ian Austin is flying the Spartan. Again, Max, it doesn't get any better, does it? It certainly doesn't. We've got another example of de Havilland's great design team. They were the principal aircraft manufacturer of the 1930s and 40s for passenger and uh, air force training. We can see the Dragonfly in the front there, that very unique shape. Little passenger plane, twin engine and a single engine running along behind, giving us a view of the sight and sound. Now just, just, just look at the difference in the interpretation of the American aeroplane, the monoplane, the old metal, Spartan executive, sleek, retractable undercarriage. The Dragonfly, which I think is beautiful, all wooden, molded ply, fuselage and biplane. And yet, believe it or not, the Spartan executive flew two years before the Dragonfly. Well, that was typical of the British design perspective on aircraft. We were still building aircraft on tail wheels long after the Americans had developed nose wheel aircraft. We were a little slow to improve our design, rather old fashioned, if you like. Old fashioned Britain may have been. In their day, Spartan executives were so expensive, only 34 were built. I believe there are only now six or seven left altogether. And we've got two of them. Well, Nigel's got two of them. He's trying to um, call on the market. Originally had wicker seats with little cushions. Croydon Airport, the original London Airport. We saw this aircraft operate from there in the 1930s. And you can see the classic de Havilland wing shape. That'll do 200 miles an hour, the Spartan, the single engine aircraft, very fast for its time and about a 22,000 foot service ceiling and that's high for an aircraft of that spec. Absolutely, here they come through again. Now we're talking the 30s, a time where we're climbing out of a depression. A Dragonfly, brand new, fully equipped, 2,650 pounds. Now you might think, well, you know, that's, that's achievable, but that's 1935. That's the equivalent now of 145,000 pounds. But in 1935, did you know that the average wage was 196 pounds? So we're talking an outlandish amount of money. Powered by the Gypsy Major engine, which we've seen in other de Havilland aircraft, typically the Chipmunk we saw earlier. This Gypsy Major engine, the inverted engine very very common still used today still available is powering the dragonfly we're enjoying today interestingly there was a seaplane version of the dragonfly that floats rather like the 172 we're going to be seeing later in the show with amish but airplane buffs amongst us would appreciate the advance in technology the Americans had at the time. And here's an ample demonstration of American technology versus the de Havilland British technology. Yeah, I'm going to lapse into an Americanism now. The Spartan executive construction technique is steel tube surrounded by aluminum. The other one that Nigel has was number 14, and that's in a sort of... Get ready with the cameras. Break, break, break. It's in a sort of green color scheme. They like it. Look at that. Beautiful lines. Spatted undercarriage. So beautifully furred wheels. Well, you don't need to retract that. 
cruise of about 125 miles per hour and it'll give you a decent range in its day of 625 miles. Five seater, luxury inside, leather everywhere. Even the cup holders are leather. Good Lord. And for some real aviation spotters out there, the registration, Golf Alpha Echo Whiskey Zulu, the A after the G denotes an aircraft registered many, many years ago. The letter A left the register in about the 19, late 60s. Look at that wing shape. I wonder how much a ticket on this aeroplane was, say, from Croydon to Paris. I think with the, with the style of owner of these things, the answer would be, if one has to ask, one really can't afford. <laughs> see the tiger moth there it's like a family resemblance the shape of the tail the shape of the wing the fin and rudder is, is could, be, could might as well be a trademark He's waving at you, Dan Griffith. Come on, we want an air wave back. Fabulous. Well, they say nostalgia is not what it used to be.